Hey everyone, welcome to another Top 10 list. This week's Top 10 is the Top 10 Most Expensive and Rare Notes. Um, now there are hundreds and hundreds of different types of notes, so I'm sure there's going to be some that I missed. So these are my top 10 of the rarest and most expensive notes. I want to make sure I've got that in there. Um, and I want to thank One Roll at a Time for being the person to suggest this. One Roll at a Time suggested uh, rare notes or expensive notes or both, so I did both. Put them all together. This is his YouTube page. Make sure to check him out. Stop by, say hi, tell him I said... Uh, Tell them, tell them I sent you, and uh, let's get on with my list. Number 10. Well, this was an extremely difficult list to, list to put together because, obviously, I don't have the notes. But I did the best I could, and uh, hopefully we won't be staring at a book the entire time. Now, the very first note that I had, I have in my book, Marking a Page, this was the note that I was going to pull out. This is just a $500, just a $500, $500 gold certificate. It says, uh, this is from, where is this particular one? This was 1882, an 1882 $500 gold certificate. And I was going to have this at number 10. And then I decided to check out some other stuff. So this is my honorable mention. Now, this particular note only has a book value of roughly, what was it? I've got it right over here. There it is. The book value on the $500 note, right there is about $8,500 or so is where it starts off at. So no, you know, no small feat here, $8,500 on this particular note. But the amazing thing is that this was redeemable in gold, $500 in gold coin. Well, that would be 25 ounces of gold. And with an ounce of gold going for <laughs> pushing $2,000, uh, you are talking $50,000 is what this note would be worth if you could convert it into gold. So that's the reason why this particular note got my attention. Now, I call this my honorable mention because there are denominations that are higher. For instance, there's the 1000 5000 over here, but... The $10,000 gold certificate. Now, I was blown away by the fact that there was a $10,000 gold certificate. We won't do the conversion. You can figure out how, how many $20 gold one ounce coins you can get for $10,000. Uh, but what I found interesting was the paragraph underneath, okay? Um, these notes were in storage at the old post office in Washington, D.C. and have status as collectible issues today by virtue of having been thrown from windows onto the street when the building caught fire on December 13th, 1980, or 1935. All notes offered for sale owe their existence to having been retrieved and saved by pedestrians who were then unable to redeem them for face value. Many will display evidence of water and or fire damage. Although a total of three, uh, 357,000 of the notes were printed for all signature combinations, very few, are, if any, uh, are, let's see, where 400 pieces are, are in existence. Um, now, with that as a background story, any of these notes that you see were thrown out of a window to be saved from a fire? Uh, that's a pretty rare note. But here's the most impressive thing. Check out those prices. In very good, you can find them for as low as 500 bucks. I would love to have one of these. If, if I come across one of these, I will get it for $500. Because a $10,000 bill, yeah, it's been redeemed. But to owe its existence from being thrown out of window because the building was on fire? Yeah, so this was my honorable mention that led me to number 10. Number 10 was that uh, $10,000 gold certificate. $1,900 gold certificate. All right, number 9. Number 9, this was one of the largest denominations of national banknotes. This was the $100 national banknote from the very first charter. Now, the very first charter of national banknotes came out in 1875. And uh, yeah, these have a brilliant green back on there. You can see it's very reminiscent of the $2 back, uh, signing a dec the Declaration of Independence. 
So that was a really cool find. Now they did make a $500 denomination of these, but only two of those still exist. These, there's a, f a bit more that you can find, and these start off at roughly $17,000. <laughs> so yeah, the first charter $100 bill, 17 grand uh, on this particular bill. All right, number eight. Number eight is a bill that some of you may have heard of, um, and you wouldn't recognize it from this side. This is an 1890, right? 1890, right there. 1890 treasury note, and it's a $100 treasury note. Now, the difference between a gold certificate, a silver certificate, and a treasury note is simply what you can redeem it for. A silver certificate was held, was backed by silver. A gold certificate was backed by gold. And a treasury note was backed by both. So it wasn't designating silver or gold. It was simply backed by silver and gold. It was backed by all kinds of precious metals from the treasury. So a treasury note. Now this particular one, 1890, uh, $100 treasury note, uh, has quite a famous name. And it has nothing to do with the front because if you saw it from the front, you wouldn't know it from all of the other old notes. But when you flip it over... You will see this is known as the watermelon. <laughs> the zeros on the 100, as you can see, look like two watermelons because of the way that they did the engraving. Now, it's actually just a format of this here, but they did it bowed, and because of that, it gives the impression that there are two watermelons on the back of this. That is how the 1890 treasury note became known as the watermelon. Now, this is one of the more collectible notes you're going to find. Uh, it, it's a very low, short printed note, a uh, very high demand note, and these are going to start off at about $20,000, even in poor condition. All right, so number, that was number eight. Number seven, I'm going to go back to the book here because that's the best way to show this particular one. Number seven is a note that, well, if I win the lottery, I'll get one of these because I just think they're cool. Sorry, confined, confined work spot. It is the 1928 $5,000 bill. I've shown my $500 bill. I've shown a $1,000 bill. Yes, they did make a $5,000 bill. $5,000 bill, there's the front, there's the back. For the most part, these were simply used for transactions from bank to bank, but they were available to the public if you happen to want to get a $5,000 bill. There's the front and the back. I can get them both in there. <clears throat> you can see that the $5,000 bill features uh, Madison, if I remember right. Let's get zoomed in. Yep, that's Madison on there. And just an idea of some of the prices. Now, they made them in 1928 and 1934, as well as 34A. Uh, the 1928 is the one that you'd, of course, want. <laughs> you'd want any of these, I suppose. But uh, the 1928s, you can see they start off at about $125,000 in uh, relatively decent shape. So that would be the $5,000 Federal Reserve note featuring Madison, of course, from 1928. Now, the next note on my list, number six on the list, would be, well, the next note that they made. If I flip over the page, there is the $10,000 bill. $10,000 bill with uh, Sam and Pete Chase on there. You can see the bank, uh, or the back of this, uh, the United States of America, $10,000. Didn't really need to put a whole lot on there because, like I said, this is a note that really didn't see a whole lot of public action. It was mainly from one bank to another. But, of course, you could get this if you wanted. Now, there was a story that a guy went to Binion's Horseshoe in, cas in Casino in Vegas, and he had a paper bag, and he put that on the craps table, rolled the dice, rolled a seven, crapped out, and walked away. And when they looked in the bag, the guy had 100 of these. <laughs> That's a million dollars. <laughs> 100 $10,000 bills. And from that point on, uh, Benny Binion put those in a display, and that's where you could get your picture taken with a million dollars cash. The way that they had it was one hundred ten thousand dollar bills, and you can see ten thousand dollar bills. They did finally sell them because they're worth about two hundred and thirty five thousand a piece right now. <laughs> so yeah, not only were they losing the interest of fifty thousand dollars a year on these notes, but the collector value as well. So they finally gave in and sold those bills. So that is the ten thousand dollar bill. You can see they're about twenty thousand or two hundred thousand dollars on the list there. 
Number five. Number five is a step up from the watermelon. This one is also from 1890. This is the thousand dollar bill from 1890. The thousand dollar treasury note. This was known as the grand watermelon. Once again, the same kind of design on the back for the grand watermelon. Three zeros on the back, all of which look like gigantic watermelons. Now these are extremely rare. In fact, uh, when I was trying to do a little homework on this, I think there's about seven of these in existence. There was one that went up for auction in 2005, and it sold for a million dollars. So, yeah, the $1,000 1890 Grand Watermelon, it's a million dollar note, without a doubt. There's the back once again, so you can see how it got its name. And that's amazing, because even though this is a replica, in order to get the replica, <laughs> they did have to take it from an original bill and the original bill had writing on it so that's just amazing that even the replica has writing on it <laughs> all right um that's number five number four number four is a is a bill that i see a lot of <laughs> this is a 1918 ten thousand dollar bill ten thousand dollar bill from 1918 features chase on it um, just the the bold look, the huge numbers, the huge font there. Take a look at the back. You can see uh, the imagery here. This was oh, just such an interesting note. Now, the reason why I say I see this note all the time is because my book has that note. <laughs> there it is. So, yes, I do see this note quite often. Whenever I look at my book, there it is. This is the $10,000 uh, 1918 Federal Reserve Bank note. Um, this does not have a price. There are only five to ten of these still in existence. So if you come across one, congratulations. Uh, you're not going to see too many of these at all. Like I said, only five or ten in existence. Number three on my list. Number three, somebody said to me in a joke when I was showing my educational notes. Uh, I showed my $1, my $2, and my $5 educational notes. And someone said, we want to see the $10 educational note. And they thought that they were being funny. Well, there was supposed to be a $10 educational note. This is an 1897, not 1896, 1897 $10 I guess you'd call it a proof. Uh, this was what the $10 educational note was going to be. Um, so there's no serial number on this. There's no stamp on this. There's nothing at all. This is simply uh, uh, what the engraving was going to be for the 1897 $10 educational note. Now, if I look at the back, there's nothing on the back of this one. This is simply an engraving for the front. But yes, they did plan on doing a $10 bill in that educational series. Unfortunately, they were forced to take the educational series off the market and replace it in 1899. Um, because of the uproar, they didn't bother going through with the 1897 $10 bill, so these never made it into circulation. But this is what those silver certificates would have looked like. So yeah, if you want a $10 educational note, here it is. <laughs> All right, number two on the list. Number two, this particular note is a $10,000 gold certificate. Okay, so why did I save this note for as long as I did? The $10,000 gold certificate, yeah, I did show you a $10,000 bill, but the thing is, that was a Federal Reserve note. And the Federal Reserve notes, those were available to the public. The $10,000 gold note, you can see this certifies legal tender and the amount thereof and payable, all that's public and private. However... This particular 1934 $10,000 note was not issued to the public. In fact, if I pull this out, where is it? You can see right here, uh, denomination, 5,000, 10,000. Uh, the following two notes, as well as or have bright orange reverses, they were issued exclusively for transactions within the U.S. Treasury and the Federal Reserve System and were never released to commercial banks or to the public. Check out the last sentence. Possession may be considered illegal. <laughs> so, if you have a $10,000 gold certificate, 
it is illegal to own it. You cannot have this. They were not issued. Owning one of these would be illegal. And let's see, they do have the back. They did use the gold imprint on the back. Like I said, these were strictly bank to bank, not available to the public, illegal to own. That is the $10,000 gold certificate. So what would be number one on the list? Well, you've heard rumors that they existed. <laughs> this is a 1934 $100,000 gold certificate. It is the largest denomination ever printed by, uh, by the United States. $100,000. They made a $100,000 gold certificate. They also made, a, I believe they made a $100,000 Federal Reserve note as well. Neither one of those were allowed to be in the public. Um, once again, this was simply bank-to-bank -bank transactions. Now, just wrap your mind around this little piece of paper for one second. $100,000 <laughs> redeemable in gold. <laughs> so if you're talking $20 one-ounce gold coins... Uh, what would that be? 5,000 ounces of gold? Is that what that would be? 5,000 ounces at 2,000 per? Uh, what is that? Over a million dollars in gold? I, I don't know. I can't even do the math that much, that big in my head. I think I'm missing a zero on that. <laughs> 100,000. That would be, sorry. That, uh, yeah, I think that would be right. Anyway, $100,000 gold certificate. Um, on the back, you can see, how, there it is there. Once again, like the $10,000 note, owning one of these is illegal. You cannot own one of these. These were never issued. The only way that this would get into uh, private hands was if somebody robbed a bank. <laughs> and a lot of good it would do you because you can't cash it in. You never could. So, that concludes my top 10 list of extremely rare and valuable notes. I want to thank One Roll at a Time once again for suggesting a list like this. It was a very difficult list to put together because there are so many different notes that you could use. Um, but I had a great time doing it, and I thank you for suggesting it. Remember, if you guys have a list that you want to see me do, uh, leave that in the comments. If you agree with my list, go ahead and hit that like button. If you disagree with my list, go ahead and leave a comment. Tell me what you thought would have been better and uh, thanks you guys for watching. Go check out One Roll at a Time. Tell them I sent you, and I'll see you guys next week.